a national supervision system covering state organs and public servants. January 12th, 2016. Part of the speech at the 6th plenary session of the 18th Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. The administrative supervision law should be modified to reflect the guideline of the CPC Central Committee that the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection and the Ministry of Supervision work as one, with the former performing the functions of party discipline inspection and government administrative supervision and being held fully responsible to the Central Committee. All public servants are under supervision. We should follow the party's unified leadership to improve party conduct, build a clean and honest government, combat corruption, expand the scope of supervision, integrate supervisory forces, and improve the national organization of, of supervision agencies putting in place a national supervision system that covers all state bodies and public servants. We should strengthen scrutiny within the party to ensure that the party was founded for the public good and exercises power for the people. We should strengthen national supervision to ensure that the state apparatus functions and exercises power in accordance with the law. We should expose ourselves more to public scrutiny to ensure that power, which comes from the people, is exercised to serve them. We should combine internal party supervision with national and public scrutiny coordinating it with legal, democratic, auditing, and judicial supervision, as well as scrutiny by public opinion, to form a strong force that will help modernize our national government system and capacity. Stronger discipline inspection tours make for stricter party self-governance. January 12th, 2016. Part of the speech at the 6th Plenary Session of the 18th Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. Discipline inspection tours are a strategic institutional arrangement for scrutiny within our party. In the Ming and Qing dynasties, 1368 to 1911, circuit inspectors carried a sword given by the emperor as a sign of their power during their inspection tours. Our discipline inspectors are not ancient circuit inspectors, but they must be authoritative. They are vital to the development of the country and the party. The key to stronger and more effective discipline inspection tours lies in full implementation of the policies of the Central Committee. Discipline inspection tours should focus on whether party organizations are safeguarding the authority of the party constitution, enforcing strict party self-governance, and following the party's guidelines, principles, policies, and decisions, and on whether a given party leadership organization is weak, has failed to assume principal responsibilities, or whether it has done sufficient work in enforcing strict party self-governance. Discipline inspection tours should urge party organizations to shoulder their responsibilities for ensuring party self-supervision and self-governance. With party discipline as the criterion, discipline inspection tours should check the enforcement of political discipline and look for any evidence of misconduct in clean governance, discipline, style of work, 
and selection and appointment of officials. They should exert their role properly in deterring misconduct and removing the root causes. Taking the opportunity of implementing the provisions of the Communist Party of China on discipline inspection tours, we should improve our discipline inspection capability in accordance with party regulations and discipline and promote institutionalized and standardized discipline inspection tours. The nationwide coverage of discipline inspection tours serves as a form of deterrence. At the central level, there are more than 280 organizations with more than 100 still due for inspection. A heavy task. The next step is to realize full coverage at the central level by inspecting all the departments of the central committee and central government. We will make further institutional innovations, establishing sound work mechanisms for organization and leadership, coordination, report and feedback, rectification, and personnel development. We will reform the organizational system, tapping the potential from within the system and motivating the staff while bringing in new members to the team so as to optimize the personnel structure. We will also employ new methods to make special discipline inspection tours more targeted, more flexible, and more effective. Problems or evidence of misconduct discovered during discipline inspection tours should be classified by category, and we should make coordinated efforts to ensure that all are tackled. Commissions for discipline inspection and organizational departments should follow up promptly, identifying the nature of every problem and offering clear solutions to all. Problems discovered during a discipline inspection tour should be assigned to the relevant party organization. Those involved must be held accountable for their own problems. There must be no standing by or trying to talk their way out of it. We should follow up and ensure rectification measures are implemented in the inspected organization, and we must call to account those who rectify problems in a perfunctory manner are inefficient or refuse to act. Inspection teams should identify the root causes of the problems they discover, offer their suggestions, and urge inspected party organizations to close institutional loopholes. In addition to historical and objective causes, an objective cause for problems discovered during inspection tours is institutional issues. These can take the form of deficient standards, insufficient enforcement, and lack of, su of supervisory measures in the management of personnel, affairs, and assets. We need to further reform the system of supervision to make it targeted and effective. Party committees of provinces and equivalent administrative units should strengthen leadership over inspection tours to ensure full coverage of inspection during their term of office. Secretaries of these party committees, ministers of government, ministries and commissions, and secretaries of party leadership groups or committees of state organs should pinpoint accountable individuals and put forward rectification measures regarding key problems discovered during inspection tours rather than assigning them at random or issuing vague statements. Study is the prerequisite and action is the key. February 4th. 2016 and April 13th, 2017. Two directives on the Two Studies, One Action Education Campaign. Section 1. 
The Two Studies, One Action Education Campaign is an important plan for enhancing the political philosophy of the party and an effective boost to the four-pronged strategy. Footnote 1, Two Studies, One Action refers to the education campaign asking all party members to study the party constitution and rules and speeches of Xi Jinping and to become qualified party members. End of footnote 1. It will be particularly effective in strengthening party discipline down to the community level. In this campaign, the prerequisite is study, and the key is action. Party organizations at all levels should shoulder the main responsibility for the campaign and take differentiated and problem-based approaches in order to ensure that desired results are delivered. In strengthening the party, the priority is to enhance its political philosophy and the key is to ensure discipline among party members and officials. Since the 18th, CPC National Congress, our party has launched two education campaigns, the Mass Line and the Three Guidelines for Ethical Behavior and Three Basic Rules of Conduct, which have all played an important role in addressing prominent problems among party officials, particularly those at the level of county or equivalent administrative units and have helped to strengthen party discipline. But strengthening political philosophy cannot be completed in a single big push. By targeting the majority of party members instead of a minority of officials at important positions and changing the education model from short-term and intensive to long-term and regular, the Two Studies, One Action campaign aims to solidify the Marxist stance of party members, ensure all party members remain consistent with the Central Committee in thinking and action, and maintain the party's profile as a Marxist party with ideals and faith. Grassroots party organizations are the cornerstone of our party's governance and source of its strength. Only if the grassroots organizations are sound and the party members play their dual roles can the party's foundation be firm and the party itself vigorous. The two studies, one action, campaign, aims to strengthen the discipline of each and every party branch and party member. The prerequisite of this campaign is study and the key is action. Party members should always be alert to their problems in study and trained to correct them in action. They must establish benchmarks, set red lines, and build a pioneering image, displaying the power of faith with action. We should rectify disqualified grassroots party organizations and uphold and implement effective rules and regulations. New situations and new problems require that we should be stricter with intra-party political activities and conduct and remedy institutional shortcomings in an innovative way, supervise the activities in the party, and intensify the education of party members. It is a major responsibility of all party organizations and leaders concerned to organize the Two Studies, One Action education campaign properly. Secretaries of party committees at all levels should do an effective job in disciplining committee members, party members, and all the staff in accordance with methods and requirements for the education of party members. We should embrace a differentiated approach and timely guidance, adopting different solutions to different problems, and avoid simply going through the motions. 
officials at the level of county or equivalent administrative unit should set a good example in this education campaign. Relate the campaign to their actual work. Take their studies to a new depth and set higher requirements for themselves to improve their political capability and their theoretical level. A directive on launching the two studies, one action education campaign, February 4th, 2016. Section 2. The party-wide two studies, one action education campaign, launched last year, has achieved remarkable results. Practice has proven that the campaign is an effective means of strengthening the theoretical, organizational, and institutional development of the party. It is also a fundamental project for comprehensively governing the party with strict discipline, and we must persevere with it. The campaign should prioritize theoretical and political training, guiding party members' words and deeds through the party constitution and rules, and directing the whole party with the innovative theoretical developments, and it should guide all to become qualified party members. The campaign must focus on a small number of key officials and on grassroots party branches. It should also promote a solution-based approach and make full use of role models. Measures should be taken to ensure that party committees or party leadership groups at various levels fulfill their major responsibilities and that the campaign is carried out on a regular and institutionalized basis. The campaign should ensure that party organizations perform their functions and play a central role, that officials are loyal, honest, and responsible, and play an exemplary role, and that the majority of party members play a model role as the vanguard so as to provide a strong organizational guarantee for promoting the overall plan for economic, political, cultural, social, and ecological progress and advancing the four-pronged strategy. A directive on advancing the two studies, one action, education campaign, April 13, 2017. Party leadership is the unique strength of SOEs. Main points of the speech at the National Conference on Party Development in SOEs. October 10th, 2016. We should strengthen and improve the party's leadership of SOEs and the role it plays in these enterprises with the goal of making them the most reliable force of the party and the country and a major force in implementing the decisions and plans of the CPC Central Committee. These include implementing the new development concepts, carrying out further all-round reform, implementing the Going Global Strategy and the Belt and Road Initiative, increasing the national strength, promoting economic and social development, and ensuring and improving the well-being of the people. We should implement policies that preserve and increase the value of state assets, improve the competitiveness of the state-owned sector of the economy, and expand state-owned capital. We must also promote reform of SOEs, improve their management, strengthen supervision over state assets, and make consistent efforts to help SOEs become bigger, stronger, and better. SOEs serve as a material and political foundation for socialism with Chinese characteristics. They are a pillar 
supporting the party in the governance and rejuvenation of China. Since the PRC was founded in 1949, and especially since reform and opening up began in 1978, SOEs have made remarkable achievements in their development. They have made a historic contribution to China's economic and social development, scientific and technological progress, national defense, and public well-being. Following the party's leadership and strengthening the party organization are a great tradition of the SOEs, their root and soul, and a unique strength. The general requirements for SOEs in the current eras are as follows. Upholding the principle of the party supervising its own conduct with strict discipline, resolving problems concerning the weakening and marginalization of the party and its leadership, never wavering in upholding the party's leadership of SOEs, party organizations playing the role of leadership and political core, guaranteeing the implementation of policies and major plans of the party and the country, serving production and operation, improving SOE's performance and competitiveness, and maintaining and increasing the value of state assets, enabling evaluation of the work and effectiveness of party organizations according to reform and development results, insisting upon party organizations' leadership and examination over the appointments of SOE leaders, focusing on the cultivation of high-caliber SOE leaders and building strong grassroots party branches, making sure the party develops in tandem with the enterprise and party branches act as a strong organizational guarantee in making SOEs bigger, stronger, and better. We must uphold the important political principle of the party's leadership over SOEs. A modern corporate system is the goal of reform. SOE's modern corporate system with Chinese features is unique because it incorporates the party's leadership into all aspects of their corporate governance and party organizations into the corporate governance structure. It also clarifies and ensures the legal status of party organizations in the legal person co corporate governance system, with party organizations and personnel being in place, clear responsibilities, and strict supervision. The party's leadership of SOEs consists of political, ideological, and organizational guidance, and the party organizations in SOEs work as political core leadership, steering the correct direction, controlling the overall situation, and guaranteeing the implementation of decisions. We should clarify, specify, and institutionalize the party organizations' roles and responsibilities in decision-making, implementation, and oversight. We should adroitly handle the relationship between party organizations and other management, clearly define the boundaries of rights and responsibilities, and form a management mechanism which is seamlessly cooperative, checked, and balanced, and where each fulfills its own function and takes on its own responsibility. The party and the people place state assets under the control of business leaders, which is a great trust. We must conduct the education of SOE leaders on engagement with the party, on principles, and on risks. We must be strict and impartial in political discipline and rules and guide them to improve their political awareness, enhance their commitment to the party, and keep vigilantly attentive. We should strengthen supervision of key targets, key positions, and important personnel, especially leadership. 
we should improve the system for overseeing decision making on major issues, important appointments and removals, major projects, and the use of large amounts of money. We should integrate daily management with supervisory scrutiny. Fully relying on the working class is inherent to the party's leadership of SOEs. We should improve the democratic management system with the Workers' Congress as the basic element, providing open access to the affairs and business of enterprises, ensuring the employee's right to stay informed about, participate in, and express views on, and oversee their enterprise's affairs, while arousing the enthusiasm, initiative, and creativity of the workforce. Enterprises should listen to the views of workers in major decision-making and deliberate at workers' congresses over major issues concerning the vital interests of the workers. We must adhere to and improve the system that employees serve as board directors and board supervisors and encourage employees to participate in corporate governance. The leadership of SOEs is the backbone of the party in the economic sector and an important source of professional talent in national governance. They shoulder the responsibility of managing and preserving state assets and ensuring that they appreciate in value. These leaders must be loyal to the party and be bold and innovative in work. They must manage their enterprises well and produce results. They must remain clean and honest. They should enhance their political integrity, have a broad view, follow the core leadership of the CPC, and act in accordance with the party's policies. They should also identify themselves with the party, care for the party, and defend the party in every aspect of business operations and management. Faced with increasingly fierce domestic and international com competition, the leadership of SOEs should rise to the challenges, be innovative, and lead the employees in breaking new ground. We must adhere to the principle that the party supervises the work of personnel management and has the right of appointment and removal of leadership and key staff, so that those who are politically qualified, competent, and upright are selected. SOE leaders should work on the front line with the workers, and those of excellent quality who have good experience are to be promoted to the leadership. We should strictly manage and care for the leadership, adopt incentive mechanisms, and leave them enough room to demonstrate their capability. We should publicize the successes and contribution of outstanding SOE leaders and foster a social atmosphere that respects the value of entrepreneurs, encourages their creativity, and lets them play their role. The strict governance of the party should be applied to SOEs, branch organizations, ordinary party members, and, basic, and the basic enterprise system. We should ensure that new SOEs have party organizations established the moment they are founded and adjusted along with the development of enterprise. We should carry out the routine education of party members. Enterprise party committees should organize regular branch meetings, branch committee meetings, group meetings, and party lectures to emphasize commitment to the party. Party branches should be the core that draws together the workers and staff, the school that educates party members, and the fighting force for solving problems. We must take political, philosophical education as a regular and basic task of party organizations. Education in political philosophy should be combined with resolving concrete problems. 
It should be reasoned and practical, and we should do our best to win the hearts of the employees. Party committees at all levels should develop the role of the party in SOEs in accordance with the principle of the party supervising its own conduct with strict discipline. Local party committees at all levels should put party development in SOEs on their agenda. And party, committee, party leadership group in every enterprise should fulfill its own responsibilities as the main actor. We must advocate integrity and fight against corruption in SOEs, focusing on party discipline and rules, and persevere in implementing the Party Central Committee's eight rules on improving party and government conduct. We will rectify problems identified during discipline inspections without fail and investigate and punish any people involved in embezzlement or abuse of state assets. Tighten political activities within our party. Part of the speech at the second full assembly of the sixth plenary session of the 18th CPC Central Committee. October 27, 2016. Over the past few years, I have been reiterating the importance of rigorously carrying out internal party political activities because our party is at a critical historical juncture when significant changes in the party and new relations between the party and the people and between officials and the people demand us to make a political effort to strengthen party self-governance in every respect. The regulations for political activities within the party in the new era adopted at this session not only embodies the provisions and requirements of the party constitution, but also a systematic representation of the rules and measures that have been formed through recent experience in strengthening party self-governance. Targeting major conflicts and problems inside the party, the regulations lay out provisions in 12 sections, pointing out symptoms and making prescriptions for both symptoms and root causes. The key to making the regulations effective lies in their enforcement. First, we should work to accomplish the fundamental task of guiding people in their ways of thinking. To win, one must become resolute first. Footnote 1. Zhang Zai. Study of the Classics. Jing Shui Li Ku. Zhang Zai, 1020-1077, was a philosopher of the Northern Song Dynasty. End of footnote 1. To better guide people in their ways of thinking and strengthen their theoretical education is a top task for internal party political activities and a prerequisite to ensuring concerted action. Mao Zedong once pointed out, ideological education is the key link to be grasped in uniting the whole party for great political struggles. Footnote 2, Mao Zedong on Coalition Government, Selected Works of Mao Zedong, Volume 3, English Edition, Foreign Languages Press, Beijing, 1975, page 265, end of footnote 2. The root cause of problems in our party is that some members and officials waver in their ideals and convictions and in their worldview, outlook on life, and sense of values. Ideals and convictions come from perseverance and are tempered by practice. We should strengthen education in theory, the party spirit, and ethics. We should try to guide party members and officials to strengthen their beliefs, reinforce the morrow of their faith, and maintain the correct way of thinking. We want them to uphold the truth, the correct path, principles, and rules, to recognize virtue, follow social ethics, and restrict personal desires. 
and to observe moral standards, preserve integrity, and cultivate character. We want them to be able to conduct themselves in life and society with faith, personality, and action. Political activities, political ecology, and political culture within the party are complementary. Political culture is the soul of political activities, exerting an imperceptible influence on political ecology. We should promote intra-party political culture and prepare the ground for a sound political ecology, advocating and practicing values such as honesty, frankness, fairness, pragmatism, realism, hard work, and integrity, and opposing misconduct, such as nepotism, unscrupulous pursuit for money and position, undesirable practices among officials, and clandestine rules. Second, we should enforce strict discipline, which is key. As our ancestors said, nothing can be accomplished without regulations and rules. Footnote 3, see note 1, page 170, end of footnote 3. Strict discipline is an inherent requirement and important guarantee for promoting and regulating intra-party political activities. We should strengthen intra-party institutional restrictions and close the gap between the bars of the institutional cage. Political discipline and rules are the most crucial part of party discipline, and observing them is the basis for observing other party discipline. Party organizations and party members should conscientiously abide by political discipline and rules, enhance their political integrity, acquire a better understanding of the general picture, follow the core leadership of the CPC Central Committee, and act consistently with its policy, ensuring that they are firm in political belief and stance and follow a correct orientation. We should work to ensure every order or prohibition is executed without fail and investigate and prosecute any violations so that discipline and rules make up a deterrent and prevent the effect of the broken windows theory. We should review the current rules and regulations in accordance with the regulations, revising whatever should be revised, supplementing those that require it, and setting new ones. Party organizations, which shoulder the responsibility for enforcing discipline and rules, must strengthen scrutiny and accountability, targeting those who relax their effort in this regard. These measures should transform lax and slack party governance into strict and firm governance. Third, we should select and appoint the right officials, which is a weather vane for political activities within our party. Unhealthy tendencies and corruption in the appointment of officials are most harmful. Thus, a correct orientation is the fundamental solution to rigorously carrying out political activities in the party. We must implement the standards for good officials and be strict with officials in their political consciousness, conduct, style of work, and clean governance, rewarding and promoting those who are loyal, honest, responsible, pragmatic, incorruptible, hardworking, and keen on reform, with outstanding performance, while leaving no space for, and punishing, those who feign compliance, flatter and ingratiate superiors, practice fraud, and do nothing practical, but angle for posts, and indulge their own interests." We must be resolute in correcting unhealthy tendencies in the selection and appointment of officials, ensuring that no appointment is made of bad people and preventing the phenomenon of bad money drives out good, and trying to create a sound political ecology with a clean environment for employing capable officials. We should improve the institutions for supervising and overseeing officials so that selection is not overemphasized while supervision is overlooked. In addition, we need to fine-tune mechanisms that allow for and address mistakes, give more positive incentives, and guide officials to maintain a positive mindset 
work hard, and act responsibly. Fourth, we should regularly carry out criticism and self-criticism within the party. Such criticism sessions are an important part of intra-party political activities in both content and form. They are an important way that party organizations educate, supervise, and oversee party members. The capability and competence of a leading body depends very much on whether it carries out serious intra-party criticism and self-criticism. We should implement systems such as three meetings and one lecture, i.e. party members regularly attending meetings of general membership, branch committees, and party groups, and one lecture every six months, in addition to meeting of party members in leadership positions where they make criticisms and self-criticisms among themselves, branch meeting with ordinary party members, democratic appraisal by party members, and frank communication and self-criticisms among party members. Besides, we need to strengthen regular education, supervision, and oversight of party members, and we should adopt new approaches to make activities in our party more appealing and effective. Criticism and self-criticism are good tools for the party to address problems and keep itself healthy, and an important means to strengthen and regulate internal party political activities. Officials must take the lead, and leading groups should set a good example in creating an atmosphere of criticism and self-criticism within the party. Officials should firmly oppose such ideas as, it is none of my business, or it is better to say nothing about what's wrong, and they should overcome any tendency to cover up errors and fail to correct mistakes. Fifth, we should focus on both inheritance and innovation, which are two key links. The great tradition of political activities that our party has brought into being in its, in its long practice is its permanent treasure, whether in the past, the present, or the future. We must never cast aside this tradition, which gives us our soul, neither should we change our nature as a true communist party. At the same time, as conditions change, we should constantly improve and innovate the content, form, vehicle, method, and means of intra-party political activities and guide new practice with new experience, giving better play to the role of such activities. We should try to create a political situation in which we have both centralism and democracy, both discipline and freedom, both unity of will and personal ease of mind and liveliness. The purpose of implementing the regulations is to effectively solve major problems in internal party political activities. All party organizations and party members and officials should consciously check their thought and action against the regulations, face up to their mistakes with courage, conduct self-analysis, and take on deep-rooted problems. On one hand, we should work to solve problems that are numerous, obvious, and widespread. For example, at work, some officials are arbitrary. Some seek no other input in making decisions or resort to liberalism or decentralism. Some officials simply go through the motions or engage in excessive bureaucracy, self-indulgence, and extravagance. There is also abuse of power, embezzlement, bribery, moral decline, and violation of the law and discipline. Some officials do not observe discipline and go unpunished for disobeying discipline. Some rest on their laurels or are irresponsible, mediocre, and lazy on the job and accomplish nothing. These problems, obvious in the eyes of the people, have clearly defied stipulations against them. 
the solution lies in strict enforcement and more rigid constraints. On the other hand, we need to tackle problems that are highly political and devastating. For example, some officials do not follow the CPC Central Committee on Major Issues or refuse to act according to our party's political discipline and rules. Some are not loyal to or honest with the party, feign compliance, practice fraud, or conceal private vice behind a mask of public virtue. Some officials make appointments based on favoritism or for reasons of personal gain, some angle for official positions, buy and sell posts, or engage in vote rigging. Some gang up in person in pursuit of private interests, form small cliques, or are primarily driven by political ambition. Such problems are often hidden and will not become apparent until critical moments. Our solution is to establish criteria for spotting them, put in place an effective mechanism, and deal with typical ones in a timely manner. Political activities within the party are a complicated matter, and problems differ from place to place. It takes courage to confront our problems and competence to solve them. We should address whatever problems come up with a focus on difficult and serious ones. When trying to solve these problems, we should make comprehensive analysis and draw inferences about other problems from individual examples, and every measure we take or effort we make should help strengthen and regulate political activities and purify the political ecology within our party.